Good morning all. Today I thought I'd look at some cutting edge technology. Um, this is a drone. It's the FunSnap Idol drone. And uh, this unit has been very kindly supplied by Banggood.com. So thanks very much Banggood. And I'll put a link to this drone in the description. Now this is a selfie drone, so the specifications will look a little bit different. Um, foldable design. It has a follow me mode gesture control not sure what the gesture is going to be and 1080 hd camera on the front of the drone right let's open the box and so foldable as you can see um, it clicks shut like that uh, it's got these little sort of gear teeth things to make sure that both sides uh, come up together and little magnets in there to lock it into this position now it looks like the props are caged um, they're not really because they're um, accessible underneath so uh, no it's not got fully caged props in the box we've got instructions a charger unit a proprietary battery we'll take a look at the spec on that in a moment some spare props and a power supply this is european so i'm going to use an alternative one Yes, yeah, so I'm going to use this uh, 12 volt, 4 amp power supply, plug that into the charger. Um, it seems to work fine. This battery is actually already fully charged. So let's take a look at the uh, battery first. Here it is, plus, minus. Um, the details are extremely tiny, so I'm going to have to get in very, very close. Um, okay, so we can see that it's um, polymer lithium ion. It's the idol. Is that b01 i think so 1800 milliamp hours 13.68 watt hours uh, nominal voltage is 7.6 volts so it looks like it's a two cell battery right let's take a look around the drone battery sits in uh, the top there on the back there's an on off switch now underneath we've got um, a couple of sensors this is sonar or ultrasonic so um, this puts out um, ultrasound pulses, measures the distance between the drone and the ground so that it can maintain height. And this is a small camera. Um, I think they call it a flow sensor. It's essentially the same as what you have on the bottom of a, of a mouse, which can track its movement across a desk. But this will be focused at a longer distance. So this is looking at the ground pattern. And if it senses any movement, it puts corrective uh, movements into the props. And so the aim is to hold itself still. Uh, GPS, of course, can do that, but GPS is um, quite low resolution. This can uh, keep itself still to a very high resolution. Uh, on the front, we have a camera, which is on a little um, tiltable uh, mechanism, motorized mechanism there. There's no pan, but then of course the drone can pan when it's in hover mode. Um, there's a little bump on the top here of the front just above the camera. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but if I were to guess, I'd say that was the GPS um, because that's going to get the best line of sight to satellites on the top of the drone. But that is only a guess. Um, on the side of the body here, there's a little flap under there. There's a USB micro B and that's um, what you plug into to get access to the uh, mass storage device in here to retrieve your photos and videos. Right, let's fold this up and actually fit um, the battery into it. Now I'm obviously not going to uh, arm it or <laughs> make the props go. Um, right, to switch it on, we have to hold the uh, on off button, but you can't just press it. That uh, just goes back off again. You have to press and hold it. Should take my thumb out of there really, shouldn't I? Wait for it to go white you get um, tones played through the motors, uh, which I think are the uh, electronic speed control, speed controllers booting up. Right, now can we hear this ultrasonic? Let me put it up to the microphone, see if we can hear it. So I can hear it ticking away there. Let's put it up to here. See if that comes through on the microphone. But now you'll have noticed that there's no remote controller in the box. There is a remote controller available for this. Um, but as supplied, you don't use a remote control, you use an app running on a phone or tablet. Now I'm going to use this Sony tablet because uh, as you can see from this 
uh, quick start guide. The remote control runs on the 2.4 gig frequency band, um, but the Wi-Fi band is 5.8 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz only. So your um, device that you've got the app loaded on must be 5.8 gigahertz um, eight capable. And the only device I had was this Sony tablet. So now we need to um, run up the FunSnap app. Um, but first, I'm just going to set my Wi-Fi, not to my home Wi-Fi, but to the Wi-Fi SSID that this thing is putting out. And uh, you can see from this, it's a little bit reflective. Um, it's now connected to uh, an SSID called DY, and then a number, that's um, the SSID coming from the drone. And of course, the tablet's now saying Wi-Fi has no internet access, because of course, the drone's not providing me with internet. But I am now connected to the drone, so I can now uh, run up the FunSnap app. Uh, right, that's interesting. This used to say connect. It now says start flying, but I don't think it will actually start flying. So it's connecting to the device. And we now have some video, which is uh, coming from the drone's camera. Let me uh, point that at the bench. Point it at me. So here's the main control screen. Now I'm getting a bit of reflection, so I'm just going to keep tilting this backwards and forwards so that you can see what's reflection and what isn't. So that's looking at the uh, rubbish on my desk. I can control the camera with these up and down buttons, which just tilts the motorized camera. Um, this button here starts the drone, but there is a confirmation. I don't want to confirm that uh, because otherwise the thing will start howling and trying to take off, and I don't want it to attempt that just at the moment. Um, this is a button for taking photographs. Should be able to do that, I suppose. Yeah, take photo success. And this button here starts video recording. And you can see a little counter counting there. Oh, there's the photo I just took. Um, so that's now recording video onto the drone itself. Um, I thought that it would record the video onto the tablet here, but no, it seems to just dump it on the drone's internal memory. Let's stop that. Um, now these are the flight controls. You sort of press and hold this. I don't know whether that, yeah, that actually moves. Press and hold this. Um, of course it won't do anything before I've launched it, but this would be to go higher, go lower, um, yaw, so rotate uh, in its in its hover, but, but turn the plane around like this. And this is forwards, left, right, and backwards. So that actually moves the drone in free space. Right, at the top of the screen we've got some telemetry stuff. It's a bit difficult to see. I'm not sure green on white was the best colour choice here, but we've got S, which I believe is speed. No speed at the moment. D, which I believe is distance. There's no information there, of course, because it's not flying. Height is sitting at uh, zero height. This is an icon for the remote control. I don't have that, so I'm not quite sure how that works. The battery is at 95%. The memory storage in the drone uh, has 93% still available. And we have no GPS satellites showing because I'm indoors and uh, the GPS can't receive a signal. Oh, now it's beeping at me. That's interesting. Let's have a look at the drone. And the props are kind of moving a bit. So I think it's saying you've sat me there for long enough and I'm not doing anything. And now I'm getting annoyed. Right, uh, let's try flying the device. I've put it down in the middle of the room on the carpet there. The camera is vaguely pointing at me, um, although I've got a tripod sat in front of me for my camera. Um, okay, so to launch the drone, we tap that. It says weather to take off. Uh, please confirm that GPS has reached over 14 states. Oh, it's got four. Uh, no, so we're going to, be, going to be flying indoors and relying on that um, flow camera sensor to, to maintain position on relative to the carpet here. Let's confirm that. Up it goes. I now need to bring the camera down to uh, have a look at me. So quite a stable image. I can rotate the craft in your mode like that. Let me just raise my camera so that we can see it. It's up there. That's quite high up. But yeah, it's pretty stable. Let's just try rotating it again. <coughs> like so. Oh, I appear to have changed its height, which you do by going up or down. Let's bring it all the way down. Okay, so if you bring it all the way down, it effectively lands the craft. 
Right, let's do another uh, flight and see if I can use some of these intelligent modes. So intelligent modes are there. Um, we have intelligent tracking, gesture control, rocket, droney, surround. Now rocket and droney, the thing will just fly away taking a shot. I think it starts the video automatically as well. We'll give that a try. Um, but that's not going to work in this room. But surround should, because I think all it does is it just pirouettes on the spot. So we'll try that once it's uh, launched. Let's take off. All right. Now that just went bonkers and I tried um, landing it, doing the weather to land and it just did nothing. I tried the return to home button, it just did nothing. So in the end, I had to kill it by pressing and holding the on off switch. That means I'll have lost the Wi-Fi. Don't quite know why it did that. Right, back to um, Wi-Fi coming from the craft again. Let's just try the camera. Oh yes, that's connected. That's fine. Um, okay, let's take off again. Confirm. And that's hovering normally now up there. Okay, let's try this intelligent mode. Uh, let's try this surround one. And yep, that's doing a full rotate. And we can see it up there doing the rotate, coming back round to pointing at me, I hope, and there it is, and it's turned off the recording, so it just does one pirouette, runs the camera while it's doing it, and then stops the camera. Let's land it. Um, right, we've got plenty of battery left, 77%. So let's try another flight and just see how um, controllable it is. We don't seem to have any intelligent tracking, so I will land. And it hasn't actually... Oh, it has now shut off. Yeah, that's interesting. It didn't um, actually intelligently track the ground on that flight. Launch it again. And yeah, that's flying nice and stable. So let's see if I can control it. Push it that way, push it that way. Whoa. I'm just thinking um, maybe on the flying setting we've got um, a fast and slow setting up there so I'm going to just push it to slow um, because it was a bit lively, a bit too lively for me. I think one of the problems here is I'm concentrating on photography and I'm not really concentrating on flying the craft so let's try once again. I'll forget about the camera for a moment. Let's just bring it down so... Oh, it landed. I'm not entirely sure why. Perhaps it felt that it had got too close to the ground. So let's try taking off again. Put the camera up there and I'm just going to try flying it now. So that's in slow mode. Will it lock on to the carpet? Yeah, it seems to. Let's bring it towards me. Bring the camera up. Right, I'd like to try the intelligent tracking now. So let's just launch it. Okay, that's in hover. Mm. Bring it towards me a little bit. Right, so now let's turn on intelligent mode. Turn on tracking, draw a square around my face, and it should, if I move, turn the craft to follow my face. And yeah, it kind of does. Let's move over a bit. 
move right over here. Oh, oh it's hit the uh, edge of the room. So I thought I'd get some uh, footage of the uh, image from the camera on the drone. I hadn't managed to do that indoors. Um, so Brett, my friend, and I took it out. That We've just started um, the surround pirouette thing. It's spinning around. There's no optical image stabilization or digital for that matter, but uh, it's not bad. It's relatively stable. There's no sound, of course, on the video that the uh, craft shoots. So interesting thing, um, this uh, FunSnap iDoll drone. Now, I must admit, I kind of got this because I thought, wouldn't it be nice if you could just unfold the thing, switch it on, chuck it into the air, and it kind of follows you around and makes videos of you. But I don't think we're quite there with that sort of technology yet. You do still have to treat it as um, a drone, as a quadcopter, and you have to, to some extent, fly it. Yes, the flow sensor and the um, height control, the ultrasonic, does maintain stability mm, most of the time i guess occasionally it goes completely bonkers and uh, when it does go crazy it's very tempting to think that what you really need is a big red kill switch but i guess you can't really have that and you'll notice that on here you've got all these confirmations and at first i thought well, why have you got confirmations why doesn't it just do it but of course on this interface it's very easy to just touch your finger on part of the screen and if you had a big red kill switch and the thing was at 20 meters up and you killed the props and it just crashed to the ground, you probably decide you didn't want a big red kill switch. But um, when it's at the edge of the room and it's struggling to try and uh, fly through the wall, yeah, sometimes you just feel you want a kill switch. And then you have to walk over to the thing and uh, press and hold the, uh, no, that's the wrong end, press and hold the uh, on off button and just kill it yourself. Now, admittedly, I've only flown this indoors, and to be honest, it's a little bit big to fly indoors. Um, it's tempting to think it would be quite nice to have something sort of this scale, a nano drone, with all this technology, with the uh, height control and the flow sensor, so that it um, sits in the room completely stable. That's one of my thoughts. It would be so nice to have this at a much smaller scale. But I guess this is intended for use outdoors, and maybe it's much more controllable outdoors. I can't do that at the moment because the weather's very, very hit and miss. So I think the person operating this really does need to be um, a drone flyer, someone who's got experience of quadcopters. I don't think you can just give this to anyone who wants uh, something to take selfies uh, of them. So I'm not gonna comment on this drone from the point of view of whether it's any better than other drones in its class. I don't really fly drones. I can't fly drones particularly well. I kind of gave up on them. But what I can say, is that uh, if you're expecting to just buy one of these things with no experience of flying quadcopters, switch it on, throw it in the air and expect it to take photographs of you, I don't think we're quite there yet. Cheerio.